God bless you all my brothers. Just want to say Happy New Year to each and every one of you and your families. And I just want to share something from Revelation chapter 8. But I just um, just want to say that I'm blessed to be on this group, brothers. Some good brothers on this group. You know, there's brothers that's listening in and growing. There's brothers, you know, that's sharing. And I thank God. Thank God, you know, for the brothers that's going on the streets and sharing the gospel. You know, I thank God. I thank God for every one of you. I thank God that on the group we have humble, loving brothers that just want to grow in the Lord and love to talk about the Lord. And maybe sometimes we have different opinions and we have different views on certain things. But I thank God that doesn't divide us, brothers. It doesn't divide us. I see godly men that's willing, you know, not to let that divide them. That we're willing, you know, we may have differences on things, but we're humble enough to respect one another's view. I thank God for that. Thank God for the brothers on the group, you know, wanting to share it. And brothers that be honest as well. You know, honest about their struggles as well. Because we all struggle, brothers. No one's perfect. Far from it. We all have our ups and downs. Revelation chapter 8, brothers. I was going to do a bit of an overview on it. There's a lot of stuff in it. Um, if you look straight away here, there's been a pause between the seventh seal and the sixth. The sixth seal was opened at the end of chapter 6 and the great day of the wrath had come. And now there's a pause in between that. John has shown two visions, the 144,000, the great multitude with white, white robes. And now before the seventh seal is opened, there's silence in heaven for half an hour. Now, brothers, there's some scriptures to have a look at. There's two Habakkuk 2 verse 20, Zechariah 2 13 and Zephaniah 1 7. These all are references to being silent before the Lord and they're, they're representing the Lord as holy and that the wrath of God has come. And I believe that's why there was silence in heaven. Because now you have um, the, this great multitude in heaven. Some believe the church is in heaven. You've got the, 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 the elders, the, the, everything's in heaven. The angels, everyone. And there is now silence in heaven. Because all of them know. This is why I think it's also a good, good point as well. Why the church is not here at this point. Now I'm not 100% solid brothers. I'm not dogmatic on any end time view. You just know my stand on that. I'm not a pre-trib. I'm not post. I don't claim any of them anymore. I'm open to all of them. In different views and points. There's some good things in them. But it's a good reason why I believe there's silence in heaven. Because if the church is there and everybody's there. The angels, everyone's there. The silence is this, because the wrath of God is going to be poured out. The silence is in heaven because judgment has come upon this world. And this is going to be a day like no other day. You know, evil has had its way, but now God is going to have ease. I believe it's because the wrath of God has come. And just like they said in the end of chapter 6, for the great day of their wrath has come and who can withstand it? And they know. Everybody in heaven knows this, that nobody is going to be able to stand, withstand this when God begins to pour out his wrath upon this world. And the Bible says that there's an angel, which many people say is Jesus, comes with a golden censer and these are the prayers of God's people. And I believe, brothers, people might have different opinions, but I believe these are the prayers of those who have been martyred and the persecuted Christians who have died for the name of Christ ever since first century when we see Nero burning them and people was dying for the faith and all the way through to now, I believe these are the prayers of them people. They will be avenged for what this earth has done to them, even to the Lord when they put him to the cross. Because in chapter 6, they called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood. In Luke chapter 18, Jesus said, Shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out to him day and night? We see at the end of this chapter it says, Woo, woo, woo to the inhabitants of the earth because the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. We see, brothers, that there is seven trumpets. A trumpet was something that would sound war in the Old Testament. But here these are God's battle alarms. These are going to go off now and... 
the seven angels who are about to let them off. According to Jewish tradition, these are the seven angels who stand in the presence of God. And we only see four trumpets in this chapter. We see two in chapter nine, and then the seventh one is going to come in chapter 11. There's always a pause between the sixth and seventh. And the first angel comes, blows the trumpet, and ale fire mingled with blood are thrown down to the earth. And the Bible says that a third of the trees and green grass were burned up. This is God's wrath being poured out upon the vegetation of the world. The second angel comes and a third of the waters turned to blood and a third of the sea creatures died and a third of the ships were destroyed. This is the, the, the wrath of God being poured out upon the seas. Then it's a great star named Wormwood, Wormwood falls on the third of the rivers, springs and waters and many die from the bitter water. God pours his wrath out upon the rivers. And then we see God pour his wrath out upon the heavens, the sky, when a third of the sun, moon and stars are struck. So a third of them were darkened and a third of the day and a third of the night. These first four trumpets signify natural calamities and God's wrath poured out upon this earth. On the natural things of this earth, the first four. And brothers, you know, while these four, four trumpets are very bad, the next three that are going to become are going to become a lot worse. I don't want to go too much about chapter 9 because we're going to look at that tomorrow. But this says the star falls from heaven. Falls from the sky and was given the key to the abyss. All hell is let loose on earth. A third of mankind are going to die. But you know brothers when I was looking at this. I see God strikes a third of everything. God strikes a third of everything. And in the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, and the book of Ezekiel, chapter 5, it gives references to this, which I believe could be talking about the same thing. Remember, I've said this loads of times, Revelation is a Jewish book. It's very symbolic language. And there's a lot, a lot of Old Testament scripture quoted from the old prophets that is, that is all pieced here. It's like everything that's been put in the Bible from the Old Testament by all the old prophets that was given prophetic and apocalyptic visions... Revelation is knitting it all together. All what these prophets have been shown now is all cut and it's knitting everything together and it's putting it in the final piece for the final show. And the Bible speaks here, brothers. Something I want to share is this here. And the smoke of the incest with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angels and... Before God is going to sound these trumpets, before God is going to avenge the blood of the saints, most people will say that the church is now in heaven. And, you know, there's some good points for that. I'm not pre or post. <clears throat> Everyone knows my view. I'm open to all of it. I don't think no one knows exactly. And I think it's very dangerous to pick one. Because there's loads of, of different points with, with, with all the eschatology views. But because there's silence in heaven, it's a good chance the church, the angels, the living creatures, everything that we've read so far are all in heaven now. And the great multitude who no one could count, they're all in heaven. And I think it's a, it's a good point for why there would be silence in heaven. Because everybody now knows exactly these next, these trumpets that's going to be blown is going to be poured out upon this world. Remember, we're not appointed to suffer wrath. And at the end of chapter 9, it does say after, after the, the fifth and sixth trumpet are blown, that the rest of mankind who did not die from these, the ones that survived, still did not repent. They still worship demons and silver and gold and and idols, they still didn't repent. This shows me that this people that are left now, now, as God is going to blow the trumpets, are ungodly people. They're not God-fearing, but the wicked, adulterous generation of people who still will not even repent. And from now on in this book, brothers, you know, in Revelations, as we go through it, I'll show you a lot of times where the people are, are, are blaspheming God, they're mocking God, they still will not repent and they're still blaming God for everything. Never them. It's always God's fault. But something I just wanted to share tonight, brothers. 
is how this smoke, how this incest, incest was, 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 was lit in the temple, it was pleasing to God, the smell of the, the incest, and what the incest was a picture of, of this, when it would be burned, the, the incest would burn and rise up towards the heavens, it's a symbolic of our prayers, when we pray, and the prayers come out of our mouth, they leave our mouth, and our hearts, and they begin to rise up to heaven, and we have Christ, the mediator, that speaks on our behalf. And let me tell you tonight, brothers, our prayers don't go and answer the run aid. God hears everything. Sometimes prayers are not answered because it's not God's will and it's not God's timing. We have to trust God when we pray. But we, you know, the Bible says that we can enter his throne with great confidence. When we pray, we can enter the throne room of God with great confidence. Because Christ is our mediator. And the reason I'm saying this tonight, brothers, is... Once the trumpet blast is sounded, then this is going to be a horrible time for people to face. And I think everybody on this group, no matter where you stand on end times, I think we would all agree that we are living very, very close to the coming of the Lord. In whatever timing that is, in whatever way that we're going to be raptured, before or after, whatever the situation, we'll all agree that we, you know are in the final moments before the Lord returns, before we see this happening, before this event takes place, it is almost upon us. And we have family, brothers. We have children. We maybe have husband, uh, we, husband. we maybe have wives. You know, we maybe have brothers or sisters, mothers or fathers, granny or granddads, whatever that may be, aunt or uncles, who are not saved, who don't know the Lord. And unless they repent and come to, the, come to the Lord Jesus Christ, then brothers, this day is going to come upon them. What we're reading is going to come upon our loved ones. How much more do we need to pray for them? How much more do we need to realise tonight as we're praying that as we begin to pray, our prayers are like this incest and they're rising up. Our prayers are rising up. And God hears them. Brothers, we need to pray for our families. We really do because as we read through this now, we're going to see some things that happen. How God's wrath is poured out upon this earth. We need to pray for our loved ones. We need to pray for our families. And we need to pray with confidence, brothers, that we can enter the throne room of God with confidence. Let our prayers be pleasing to the Lord. Lift up his name. Pray for him tonight, brothers. You know, we say we love him. We say we love our children. We say we love our families. Then we need to pray for him. We need to pray for him tonight. Because this day is almost upon us. This day is almost here. We need to pray for our families, brothers. We really do. You know, I don't know about you tonight, but the thought of any of my family or friends going through this, thought of anybody going through this, brothers, is, is not only terrifying, you know, but is a horrible to think of what is going to come upon this world. But why we still have hair in our, and breath in our bodies, brothers, let us pray for our families. And let us know as, as we begin to pray and as we're praying as we're, and as we're asking the Lord to save them, Know that as you're speaking, them words are rising up to heaven and God is hearing them. They're not falling on deaf ears, brothers. He don't turn his ears to his children. He hears our prayers. Pray for your loved ones. As we go into this new year, we're another year closer to the Lord. Let's see our, our families and friends saved who don't know the Lord. Let's pray that they will come to know the Lord and they would escape this day. They would escape the wrath that is to come upon this world. God bless you all, my brothers.